Simmons. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? We're just uh, remembering our friend here, uh, Patrick Kendrick. How does it go, Chris? I forget, man. I can't do that. That that uh, British. There accent. it is. There it is. I can't do it. Patrick's good at it. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Talking to the Dolby Fika podcast, episode number 189. Uh, with me tonight, we got a a couple returning uh, players, if you want, if you will. Uh, Cristiano Oliveira is here as always. Cristiano, what's happening? What's up, baby? How you doing? Good, good. And uh, Timo, the beard, uh, the bearded one is here. Hey, this is like a this is like a everybody tassa. going. It's like a Tassa podcast. We we rotate. Bring in the, the bench warmer. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm me I'm messing with you. Yeah, so. And uh, and negative George is here. George Duarte, all the way from up north. What's going on? Uh, nothing. Everything's going well. Uh, happy to be here, and it, it looks like it takes two of us to replace uh, Steve and or Patrick. There you go. Um, before we uh, we get a chance to uh, to go on, I, I wanted to take this opportunity to wish uh, uh, a very happy birthday to Hubert Sanch. Uh, he is the gentleman that uh, takes care of our uh, website and and uh, helps us out when everything web related. So big, big, uh, big, big abrass. And uh, and a big wish of uh, happy birthday for Roberto Sancho and, and uh, hope your day went well. On tonight's podcast, we will happy look. Birthday. <laughs> we will uh, look back at the Murderance game. We'll recap that game. We will also look um, at the transfer window and uh, Befica's moves or lack thereof, and uh, we'll preview uh, Bolnes along with a couple other news. So uh, that's what we have on tap for tonight. We got a good show as always, and uh, thank you for for tuning in. Uh, so let's start with uh, with the Murarense game. Befica uh, played a repeat uh, against Murarense. They traveled to Murarense Conch once again this weekend, not to play for the for the league. Um, I'll give you the lineup: Julio Cesar, uh, Almeida, Lisandro, Jardel, and Eliseu, Samaris, and, and Renato in the middle. Pizzi and Caetan on the wings. Jonas and Mitro Glu uh, up front, which seems to be our strongest lineup right now, Timo. Uh, totally agree. Um, you know, especially out wide up front. You know, PZ has been doing spectacular, and Nico is Nico. Um, he's looked really good. Definitely not afraid to take on anybody. And uh, you know, the passing he, he's been doing really well with um, Eliseo. They actually seem to, you know, pick right back up where they were before um, with their passing together and their movement. So it's it's nice to see that we're able to move around. Um, and keep possession of the ball and not lose it as often uh, out left. Yeah, and here's the thing, uh, George. There's a big thing going on now that Smith is healthy. Um, there's been people that have been asking for a start. Well, how do you feel about Almeida? Obviously, Almeida's done well. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, Smith offers a little bit more, but how, what do you feel? That Do you think that Smith has asked to regain back his position? It's, it's hard to make a move on a team that isn't losing. So it's it, it's mm -hmm. it's hard to take that spot away from Almeida, especially considering last little while he's been a little bit more involved with the attack. You know, he set up the uh, the first goal nicely against Moreirense on the on the weekend. So yeah, I think he has to wait. The problem with that is if you're waiting for Almeida to make a mistake to then put in Samedo, that mistake might end up costing you. Although Almeida doesn't normally make too many mistakes, um, but yeah, now you just gotta wait. And not to say that maybe. Nico should have waited too because the team was rolling, uh, but Nico's a little bit. Uh, uh, although Patrick Kendrick, Patrick didn't really believe he may, he he's a world class player. Uh, <laughs> we believe we believe him to be that. So uh, him, you got to put him in as soon as possible, just like Salvio. I'm assuming once he gets back. But Nelson, uh, samilu has got to wait. A couple of things. A couple of things. First, I agree with 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 Patrick. Second of all, <laughs> any starting lineup with Andrea Almeida in it can't be can't be passed over as. A fantastic or our strongest starting lineup. Right now, it just so happens that the kid, who Mudo, who Smedo, only got back from a, a pretty serious knee injury that took him three to four months to recuperate. So you can't throw the guy back in there. He played on Tuesday. He wasn't going to play over the weekend. I think they're slowing him in. You know, easy uh, bringing him in, uh, easy into the into the lineup. I think he's not going to play two games a week anytime soon until he is a hundred percent back. So right now, no harm, no foul on their Almeida. Does the job. It's not like they were going up against Porto or Sport with you or Braga, which is really the only three teams that they're going to pose any type of threat on the Benfica back line. So 
again, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. Any starting lineup with Almeida in it can't, can't pass for the strongest lineup. I, uh, speak, uh, speaking of those three teams, uh, Porto, Sporting, and Braga, I could see Benfica using a similar strategy to what they used a couple of years ago where um, when they were going for the Europa League and fighting down the title uh, run where Maxi would play certain games and um, Almeida would play the other games where you needed maybe a little bit more defense, a little bit more stability in the back. Yeah. I could totally see uh, Samidu playing the rest of the way, but in the, the, the games where Benfica has to be a little bit more cautious... Almeida sitting back because I think he can defend a little bit better than Samir. I'll tell you why I disagree with that. And, and again, I'm not trying to disagree with you, Negative George. No, no worries. It's just, it's just going back on the track record. When Samir was healthy, he played every single day. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. why I'm, I'm disagreeing. I'm not saying it's not a valid point. You know what I mean? He might do that. But I'm just going based on what we've seen in the past. When he was healthy, he played. He played every single game. Cristiano, what do you feel the timeline is for uh, Samir's return? Ah, you got to give him a couple more weeks here. I think, uh, so, I mean, you might just uh, even rotate him with the B team. I know you don't want to, you don't want this kid playing extra minutes down there getting tired, but if that's what it takes to get the, to, to knock the rust off of him, you got to do what you got to do because you need this kid healthy. Uh, you need him playing at, a, 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 as, you know, at his finest because now you got the big games coming up. You have the Porto Sporting Champions League games. You need this kid to be fit. And that's why I kind of understand with him not playing this weekend. I think there's easy, uh, easing him in, I should say. It's back into the starting 11. Um, don't force anything. Let's make sure the kid is 100%. And until he's not, yeah, you're going to go with the better option right now as far as health-wise, which is Andre Almeida. But I, I firmly believe that when this kid is back and he and he feels it and he's got that feeling back, I, I think he'll be starting um, that right back with, with no problem at all. Yeah. He did say that he wouldn't mind going to the B team to pick up some game rhythm. So he's, he's willing to uh, work well, for a spot. Uh -huh. Right now, I mean, you're stuck in a very difficult position because you need to get this kid back to uh, as quickly as possible to 100%. But be with these very tough games coming up, you really don't have the luxury of throwing them out there and say, you know what, let the you know knock the rust off, kid. Um, so you're kind of stuck. Do you send them to the B team, or do you play them in these games and hope that that he's back um, to anything as close as he was in the past? So uh, you know, it's a very difficult position right now. Yeah, so let's get into the game, Cristiano. I know that you had a chance to uh, watch the game, and you told me that you were you were trying very hard not to fall asleep. Yeah, man, come on, dude. I mean, I, I sat here all weekend and was on Twitter and, and, and other uh, other f platforms, I should say, and listening to everybody rave about this Benfica performance that it was the closest thing to the old Benfica. On the and, and I, you know, I went in and I didn't watch any highlights. I made sure I stayed away from anything with the goals related to the goals, anything because I wanted to to have this fresh. Even though I knew the score, I just wanted to be caught by surprise. And guys, I mean, I got to be honest, with, with the exception of the the build up and the play in the four goals, Benfica didn't do anything else. It's pretty much a boring ass game. Yeah, you could give me the build up like you've mentioned before we came out. Of 18 touches and nine players. Yeah, that's all sounds beautiful. And it was beautiful. I gotta, you know, I tip my cap to them. It was a, a, excellent build up. But you take away those four opportunities, did they really create any other chance in this game? Yeah, yeah I mean, you got a point. George. I mean, I always I mean, have a point. Always, always. <laughs> he has uh he has a point. You know, it's I I believe we have more goals. Uh, this year than we have in the last 20 years or whatever. The, tw by the, the, the 20, is it combined? 20 no. um, years? No. <laughs> no they, you you have the best record of goals scored at this junction in the championship that you've had in the past 20 years. Right, something like that. Now, what I do, you know, the, the teams with George Jesus, it was full out attack. They would create tons of chances and they'd miss some and they'd score some. With this team, for whatever reason, the few chances we were thankfully, no, thankfully for this, the few the few chances we 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 create, we capitalize. You know, I'm gonna go give a little history here to some of the older uh, older fans. We used to have a Brazilian player, Isaías. Epa! He used, to, he used to take ten shots a game to score one goal. That's Yo. what we think he used to be like. But that dude now, would shoot from anywhere on the field. I mean, he was even <laughs> he'd be at, at, at the scores table ready to come in. I, <laughs> he's already shooting. He's not even in the game. That guy. He, he takes shots. Must be where Talishka got it. <laughs> he takes shots from further away than Raul Jimenez does sometimes. But yeah. but uh, this year we don't need we haven't needed to create 10, 12 to score our goals. Um, so has that affected the the, the strategy? Is that pre keeping us from from pushing forward more? I no, don't know. Bob. But we no. play under control. 
we've scored our goals and we've won uh, handily. Listen, I, I agree with you. I mean, we're we're I guess our conversion rate is up, in, in, com, you know, compared to years prior. But my point was solely based on everything I read that Benfica played really well. I was expecting, you know, spectacular game, more uh, ball movement, and I didn't see that. I mean, with the exception of the build up on the four goals, I mean, everything else that I put the pepe aquí, put the pepe. There was a lot of whistles in this game, a lot of stoppages. It wasn't what I was anticipating it would be going into the game. Not saying that they didn't capitalize, George. Yes, they're scoring goals. I mean, this team right now between Jonas, Mitroglou, and, and even Jimenez once in a while when he doesn't get on the score sheet. I mean, you have world – not I don't want to say world class, but you have very, very good finishers in the box. And Jonas and Mitroglou with both feet with their head. Um, and so, yeah, that helps. Benfica hasn't been – dominant by any stretch of the imagination. Even though yeah. you look at the scoreline, it's 6-1, 4-1, and you think it's dominant, but this game was not dominant by any stretch of the imagination. It just, they played against a team that has one or two, you know, relatively good players, and everybody else is just professionals in the Portuguese league. It wasn't nothing out of this world, nothing, not that spectacular performance that we were accustomed to to seeing, you know, who's all as you violate the football. We didn't see that. Yeah, but but uh, we haven't been dominating all all season. But Timu, the one thing that's encouraging is is as George said, the team is controlling games, and there's a, a a certain purpose in the game flow and the attacking maneuvers and the transition into the the other half. That's very noticeable. Yeah, they you know we really seem to be taking our time on the build up um you know i kind of agree with cristiano where you know the game was a little bit boring but you know while boring we didn't allow murder dance to get into the game at all you, you know every any time they had the ball um we constantly were right on top of them as soon as we got the ball back we kind of just sat back with it we didn't allow them to just keep the ball and move it around. So it was kind of one of those games where we tried to keep possession and even if we weren't doing anything with it you know what? We weren't getting hurt. So, you know, I I can't say that I like that style of play. You know, I'd rather have, you know, the full acceleration constantly going to goal. Let's constantly keep moving. You know, I'd like every game to end, you know, 8-1, 8-0, 10-0. You know, that's what fans want. But we're not getting hurt. We're not allowing the other team to hurt us. So, you know what? Benfica's finally got their identity. They're finally keeping control of the ball, and they're finally beginning to, you know, even if they're not moving it around, that well, we're not losing it like we normally were in the beginning of the year. I hate to be negative, Nelly, but I mean we negative played, George. Oh, we, we played, no, you don't. We played, we played against the team. We dom. We scored ten goals against the team in two games. That taking away the Madeiros kid, Madeiros kid, right from Sporting. Yuri, Yuri Madeiros. Anybody else on the team even make the Benfica bench? I mean, come on, we played a bit. Yes, we're beating everybody. We haven't played one quality opponent. Big boys are showing up now. Let's see what this team does against those teams now. This is where, for me, the Campeonato right now, this is where it starts right now. I want to see what this team has been able to change. I mean, we got it demolished by Sporting at home. I want to, And ever since then, this team has gone on a 10-game win streak. Fantastic against nobody. Let's see the changes. Let's see what this coaching staff has been able to do with this team ever since that one very – embarrassing loss, a loss, I should say. Let's see what they do now against the big boys. Yeah, the, the wins against Maritimus and the Rocas and the Tondela, fantastic. All those teams combined, they'll have two professional players. Come on, guys. <laughs> uh, so I agree I agree uh, that this is when the, uh, the, the the Campeonato will be, I don't know if it will be decided, but this is where the real, real test comes. Other than the win at Braga, where we didn't look really good, we, ha we haven't beat anybody really relevant. This next month, we have the Porto Sporting and the, the Champions League games. But in addition to that, uh, Sporting also, I believe they go to Guimarães, they play us, they have a couple extra games. Both of the Lisbon teams have really tough months. And if one of them goes into the tank, that'll be done. Hopefully it'll be them and it won't be us. But I could see the two, the two of... Uh, I could see Benfica and Sporting you know, beating each other up and, and having tough games and... Unfortunately, I hate to say this, but maybe seeing Porto even sneak in because they have a little bit of an easier road for the next few weeks. I really don't care about Sporting's schedule up ahead. I'm only concerned about my squad, but since you touched on it, 
Porto right now, they have so much in-house that they have to take care of that even if Benfica and, and, and Sporting do slip up, I, I don't think Porto is going to go undefeated anyway. So um, I think there's room there, but I, to me, I'm just concerned with how well we play in these big games. That's what I want to see. I want to see the team show up, and I want to see the team create these beautiful chances that we've seen today, or uh, that I saw today, but the game was obviously over the weekend. Um, that, that's what I want to see these guys perform at this level, not against a bunch of monks. Yeah, but Chris, do, do you find it? Uh, do you find it interesting that out of all three teams, we probably started the worst, and currently we're perhaps the team that's playing the best out of the three? Yeah, I think the one thing that has definitely helped, man, is the stability. And this is something that you talked about all off season long, and uh, even last season throughout the throughout throughout the season, and and this off season, and now the beginning of the season when we struggle a little bit, you, you kept touching on the fact that the stability of the club, the, how stable the club was, the president from the president on to the bottom. Even when this team struggled, everybody stayed united. No one turned their backs on each other. It was no finger pointing. It was just, you know, it's a long season. We drop points, but we'll figure out a way to turn this thing around, and we'll be back next week. And they had that, you know, choo-choo attitude. They just keep on moving, and hopefully things will sort itself out. When you look at the other two clubs, yes, they started off better than we did, but one coach is re uh, one team has replaced their coach. There's a lot of turmoil going on there. And Sporting, and I'm not trying to crack. I'm not trying to be funny at all, but all you see is, you know, even though they're winning games, a bunch of crybabies here and there. They complain about everything and, and anything. I think there's so much going on in, in, inside those other clubs that it's helped Benfica get back into the race. Not only have they played better over the last 10, 10 or so weeks, but the fact that the stability, there isn't none of that baby crap going on in the Benfica locker room. And I think that's definitely helped them out. Yeah. yeah I agree with you there. I don't yeah. see, you know, Luis Vieta is pr pretty quiet. You know, he's kind of a quiet guy right now. He's letting, you know, everyone else do the talking. And I think that's kind of helped us quite a bit. Um, I mean, all you see is Facebook posts, you know, some of the uh, other teams, uh, you know, tweets that they're putting out, like the one today about Cajinho. Um, You know, w what is the deal with that? You know, yeah, that's hurting them more. It's helping us. I mean, I agree. You know, we look stable. You know, we look like a calm team. We're just playing. You know, we're doing our thing. We're, we're letting – the players show what we are on the field. Even though Chris doesn't think it's that great, we're still winning. You know, 10 wins in a row, is to, still 10 wins in a row. And, you know, good. Let us keep going. Let them keep talking. Keep our mouths shut and show it where it hurts. Yeah. Right I'll on the field I'll, with the I'll, results. I'll give you a little look into my soul here, right? One thing that I, I've always taken pride in, in, in my whole life, I should say, since I was a little kid, first, first time I remember something about a soccer ball or soccer game was, I believe, 1982. Uh, to go show you my age. I, was I wasn't old. even born yet. I, I was four years old, and but wow. I go back to then, and that's the first memory I have of soccer. And the one thing that I've always carried with me um, when it came to Benfica, and that's the one pride, the one thing in my heart that I've always felt great about, is even through tough times with this Benfica club, no one could ever accuse them of not being professional. And you see that with these Twitter posts and these Facebook posts and everything you see associated with Benfica. You don't see these childish games um, like we see from these other clubs. And, and again, I take pride in the professionalism in the club. And when I, it's just something that when I watch this and I read these posts like today, I just crack up, man. I crack, And then it, it, it is, man. It gives me it gives me happiness. When Benfica doesn't even, doesn't even reply to them, it's just like, yeah, whatever, bro. Do you? You know what I mean? It, it just it shows you the different levels of where these two clubs are at. Man. Yeah, I think that the more you talk, uh, the bigger chance you have of, of whatever you say comes and bites you in the ass. So it's better that you keep your mouth shut, and if something does happen, at least you weren't talking shit all that time. Or you just do like me. You eat crow. That's it. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, uh, you, you eat a lot of it, though. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Let me uh, let me just run this by both uh, team and and George. Uh, Mitro Glu scored uh, quite a quite a, a good goal and he had a decent game. Um, it, news came out, news reports came out that Benfica actually stopped Fulham from selling uh, Mitro Glu since Benfica does have the option. Uh, I'll start with you, team. What is your opinion on Mitro Glu's seven million clause? Do we do we sign that? Do we pick that up? At the end of the season, I, I think you you have to hold off till the end of the year, just to, obviously to make that decision. Um, you know, he, he's looked pretty good. You know, he's strong on the ball. You know, he might not be the quickest. He may not look like he's actually putting in a lot of work all the time, but you know, he seems to be working really well with Jones right now. At least in my opinion, 
you know, Chris will probably disagree as he always does with everyone else. Um, <laughs> but, you know, come the end of the year, if he's got 20 goals, where is he now? 15? Um, you know, I, I think, and I'm not saying he's at the level of, you know, our past glorious striker that we had, you know, Oscar Cardozo. You know, I'm not saying that, but I think Cardozo in the league had 26 was the most he's ever scored, and then I think yeah. after that was 20. So I think he's only actually ever scored 20 in the league twice. You know, yeah, and did. at this point, Mitro Glue is at 15, I think. Am I wrong? Yeah. You might is be at 15 that? total, right? right? Not legals, right? I might yeah, be off. I might be off by a couple. Yeah, he's yeah. To he's total. All right, total so he's, maybe maybe he's only at ten then. That might have been his tenth goal then. Even then, you know, if he gets anywhere near, you know, between fifteen and twenty, I mean, for a seven million, why not? I mean, he's not that old. Um, he looks like he's pretty durable. Um, he works well with Jonas, and if we have Jonas for another year or two, why not let them keep developing together? Um, it seems to be working. So, you know, I'm of the philosophy: if it ain't broke. I fix it. Um, you know, once it's broken, get rid of it. Um, you know, to answer your question, I say at the end of the year, if he's anywhere between 15 and 20 goals in the league alone, I, I take him back. Um, mm -hmm. As long as he's at this level that he's at now where he's moving around and, you know, helping out the team with, you know, winning, trying to win the ball, trying to get onto every single ball that's in the box, even when he's going against his own teammate. George, what's your I, feeling? I, if he continues to play well and to score... I would consider picking up the option. The difference, the issue is that teams like Benfica don't normally spend that type of money on a player of that age. If they're going to spend seven, eight, nine, ten million, they normally sp spend it on a guy who's 24 and under, with the hopes of eventually selling it, selling them. Yeah, um, that probably I mean, won't happen with, with Mitroglou. But the problem is, if you don't keep Mitroglou for seven. You're gonna potentially spend more than seven on several different replacements and never get someone who exactly. can match his production. Yeah. No. So it's exactly. safer to keep him, but I don't know if they will. I would. Yeah. Mitro Gluga nine He'll league goals. Be... Mitro Gluga nine league goals, twelve in total in twenty eight games. But right. just, just and my, he'll, my he'll thoughts. be twenty eight in March. Yeah. I, I think you wait to the end of the season. You don't want to pick that up now, and he has a season and an injury, and then he's screwed. Um, and then Benfica stuck with that, so you wait till the end of the season. And at the same time, I think Benfica are going to mm -hmm. look at what else will be available at that time um, for that seven mil. And if they can't find a, a suitable replacement or a better player or a player of equal, you know, talent, I think then they will probably um, purchase his rights and keep him because yes, he's. I mean, he hasn't been a world beater, but he's been a, he's been a good player for us. He's been effective, just like uh, Lima, perhaps. Starting to, to be like Lima. A Very little similar, effective. Yeah. Effective. Um, Cristiano, last one before we uh, we take a short break. Uh, Jonas has been on a blazing pace. Do you think that he's going to challenge... Uh, uh, what's that guy? About my Do you think he's challenged Pepita for the golden boot? Bro, Vernaldo's only two goals behind, I believe. So, I mean, this is a guy that's scored 40 or 50 for I don't even know how many years now in a row. Um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I, I would love for him to do so. But I think that there's too many other guys, that, there's too many other studs um, that will be battling battling it out with him until the end of the season. So, I hope he does. I hope he does. I mean, the Portuguese Campeonato is the weaker of the leagues of, of all those guys that are, that are you know, at least fighting it out with him. And if he stays healthy, he should be right there along with everybody else. But when you have a beast like Ronaldo, who's only two goals behind, and the guy that will score 40 for sure, <laughs> most likely, um, I think it would be very hard for Jonas to match that. Yeah. So If I could uh, just, if I could just ahead, say George. one thing about Jonas real quick. I, I The guy impresses me more and more each game. And the way he celebrates the goals. The, you'd think that guy was born and bred at Benfica. The, the excitement, he is in it to win it. And it's that type of player that, that we need. You know, an older guy that I figure doesn't, doesn't usually pick up, like I said, similar to the Mitro Glusa case, although he's older in different situations. But that guy, he's been 100% professional. He's super skilled, and he's in it with 100%. Um, and I, I'm really impressed with his play. Yeah. This is a guy yeah, that... Yeah, he just, looks happy. Every time somebody else scores, he's the first yeah. one to get there. I mean, you know, he... he I don't think Jonas is the type of guy, when I watch him celebrate, even when he scores a goal, he doesn't make it seem like it's his goal. Like, 
you know, it's pointing at Nico. It's, you know, pointing at whoever. It's saying, you know, you made the goal. He's the first one there. Yeah. And, and that's something to me that's impressive. Um, I Yes, I think that might have to do with him being a little older now, a little more mature. And, you know, actually, I think he maybe now he's actually really loving to play the game on a team that he knows he fits in where he's, you know, he's got other people looking up to him. Well, this you know, he's is got guy, these younger kids who are looking at him and be like, hey, look at this guy doing his thing. This yeah. is a player that was let go by Valencia, and he has a lot to prove, bro. And I think, and I think he feels him and Julio Cesar as well. Both of these guys, you could tell the way they talk about Benfica, like you've mentioned, it seems like they've been there. They came up through the through the scholars, and they've been there forever. They love this club. Yep. Um, and Jonas, let's not forget, man, he turned down a move to China over the summer, and apparently he's the same club that purchased Jackson Martinez today for 45 million euros. That was the same club that was after him, and he said, no, 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 I still haven't finished business to do here in Europe. I want to get Benfica out of the Champions League group. Um, he really he seems to really be enjoying uh, play for Benfica, man. I'm glad to see that because that's only going to attract other guys, and they're going to go back to Brazil and, and share their experiences and speak well of the club, and it's only going to make other guys want to come play for us. All right. I agree with you, and I think that at this point he does deserve a, a call up to the national team. I mean, the way he's been playing, it's, it's been lights out, man. The guy, you can't you can't really say nothing much about him. He just yeah. he gets an opportunity, and and nine times out of ten he's gonna bury it. He's he's been fantastic. Yeah. Although I'd rather he not get picked so, it, so that he doesn't have to travel uh, overseas and stuff. Exactly. Well, but I agree. Would... He just. He... He deserves it, but let's not wish that on him. We don't want yeah. that. He would have a, a very short vacation because uh, Brazil is involved in the Copa America this summer. In the United States. That's right. So, yep. um, any other thing, Alfredo, before you go, man, let's not, don't forget to touch up on Lisandro, who, who left in a stretcher. Yeah. Uh, it looked like it was... Well, it looked like he was hurt serious. when he was on the stretch. But before that, the fact he stayed in the game, I didn't think it was serious. But like now, the news came out and it says that he's he's day to day. So hopefully yeah. he'll miss a game until Luizão seems about ready uh, to be back uh, playing. So you know. Yeah, from what Luizão I understand, Luizão posted something today. Yeah. Go ahead, Tari. From what I understand, Lisandro is it, it looks like a muscular injury. Uh, maybe a pull, but it didn't. It didn't look like Chris said. It's day to day. It doesn't look like uh, that. It's something that's going to take too long, which is encouraging uh, because of uh, what we got coming up. Timo, what did Luis Zampo? I'm sorry, I missed that. What did uh, uh, what did Luis, Luis Zampo? He was just saying um, Voltando uh, to that effect. Um, I'm not on Facebook, and I just kind of quickly saw something earlier today. Um, where he says he's, he's coming back. So um, we might see him in this next upcoming game. Um, either that or we're going to see, uh, obviously, Lindelof because Lisandro won't be there. But I have a feeling we'll probably see Luizão. And then, I don't know, I think depending on his, uh, let's say he's here, what's the next game? Is it Bolnes? Bolnes, yeah. That's uh, okay. it's tough, man. So if that's his first game and if uh, him and Jardel look good together, I, I think Lisandro might have a tough time getting back in the lineup. Yeah, I think I just think that with the with the <laughs> run of games that you got coming up, with very crucial games as we have already mentioned, I think that it's very hard for Luizon to hit the ground running, especially at his age after such yeah. a prolonged absence. But the, his injury is is an injury to 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 the arm, which hasn't prevented him from running, from working out. But still, for a guy that aged to not have game rhythm, that's something that's very detrimental yeah. to for him. So, um, Lisandro's. I I actually expected if he could to maybe tap into Cesar before the transfer window was out, uh, bring Cesar back from Brazil. I know that he had said that it would be difficult for him to return to uh, to Portugal, but I think it's because of the ties that he had and the contract that he, the loan contract that he has at Flamengo. But uh, just like Benfica brought Guzu back, you could have they could have very well called up Flamengo and say, "Hey, Malta, vai mandar o César aí para jogar para gente." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on that note, let's take a break. <laughs> a good win for Benfica. A uh, good win for Benfica, as I've said. Jonas uh, with two, Mitro with one, Gaetan with the fourth goal for Benfica. Uh, quite very, very combination good goals in the run of play. Very uh, happy with the way the team has been playing so far. So we score another one uh, on a, 
on on pitches that usually up north are, are very difficult to play in. So that's a good win for us. Uh, we're going to take a short break here for Nelson's uh, halftime headlines, and we'll be right back. All right, and we're uh, back for the second half of uh, of the Befica podcast. Uh, talking to the Lobby Figure podcast, you, that's what you're listening and, and you guys that are watching us live on YouTube. Um, next up, we, weren't gonna, we wanted to look at, uh, at the transfer window, that uh, the transfer market in Europe, well, in Portugal at least, closed up yesterday at midnight. Uh, Benfica not too active um, in a transfer window. We did pick up Lukas jo- uh, Jovic, uh, an 18-year-old Serbian uh, forward forward from uh, Red Star Belgrade, uh, and also Grimaldo, who we had picked up earlier in the window from Barcelona B, as you guys know. Um, a lot of guys uh, going out. Judy Cic went to Anderlec, uh Teixeira, as Nelson has mentioned, Vitor Andrade also going to Guimarães, Cristian to Palermo, uh, Alexis Scholl, which I didn't even know this kid played for Benfica. He, he was a left back for the B team. Was only played three games. He went to Belgium, back to his home country, to play for for Ghent. Uh, Rafael Guzo, as we've mentioned, came back from Tondela to help out uh, the B team. Uh, Jalo rescinded his contract. He's going to uh, Thailand somewhere. And uh, Klesiu, Cristiano Klesiu, our future right Grand back. Machina. Grand <laughs> you guy is a striker on the B team. Starting right back on the A team, then he's a Mozambique starter, and then he's the world's greatest speedster, and then he's on loan. I don't get it. Didn't we pick up another? Didn't <laughs> no, we pick, I think we sold him. All right, sold him. I think sold him. If I, didn't we pick up another kid also from Serbia, another striker? We picked up two of them. Not just yeah. Juvic. Ponovic, just, just something. Sponja. 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 Yeah, he's. Yeah, yeah. but he's got, he, he went to the B team. Yeah. Yeah. He went to the B team. Um, George, do you? F- here's here's the other thing that's gonna t- kind of like circle around it. But out of all three teams, obviously in Benfica, which was the team that was the worst for for most of the first half, was the worst out of the three, um, as far as playing style and and perhaps the squad too wasn't as deep. Do you find it interesting that uh, Benfica was perhaps the, the less active out of the three clubs? Uh, not really. Um, I didn't expect too many changes because of the injury situation where we have two or three guys expected to come back. No, Smith was starting to, Luis Zelm as well, and then Salvio. We already have too many players as it is. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that we, um, we didn't make too many moves. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that we picked up a few young guys, but we seem to get a few young guys from Europe every year and then we never see them again. Hopefully there'll be a little bit more uh, development development with these guys. Um, I did expect more from Porto and Sporting, so I, I, that's why another reason I don't expect. I'm not surprised that we were uh, maybe the quietest. Um, but the other two, I don't think they they improved themselves that much either. So I thought Benfica was quiet, but they they didn't need too many big moves, in my opinion. Porto didn't know much neither. They brought in Orlando or whatever the kids saw. Marega. Maricas and let go of Dumbia or whatever. They brought in. Uh, What's his they name? They brought in Suck. Ramon oh, Sa- brought, I forgot. They also Dumbia. brought in the uh, center back, the center back from Sporting Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, but that was for the B team. That was another guy B team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, none, in of the, Su- none of the big three. Sorry, none of the three in Portugal really did much. In fact, that was, this was the quietest transfer window in the history of soccer, I think. Well, Sporting did, though. Sporting let go of a, a, a guy that's given them points over the last couple of weeks, a guy that yeah. was a regular on their team, yeah. whether starter or off the yeah. bench. And they brought in I'm a guy off. from China who, I mean, no one knows much about. <laughs> yeah, Nelson uh, calls him the boat. Barco. <laughs> that's his name, Barco. And I heard, Nelson I heard calls him the boat, Barco. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris, do you know that, uh, that why Sporting brought a guy named Barco? I just said that, Barco, Sporting Bob Barco. Do you know why they bought a guy named Barco? I heard it. I seen some stupid Navio joke. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, why? There's Navio's Passar. There's Navio's Passar. Yeah, I knew somebody. I'm sorry. I had to borrow that one. It was too, it was too good to resist. <laughs> it must be a Portuguese thing. Yeah, but from what I understand and from the reports that I've heard, and, and obviously not everything that you read are, is true, uh, both Sporting and Porto were out there trying to sign guys, and they were being denied left and right. I understand. I think that Porto made yeah. a move on Rafa from Braga, from and Braga. they offered 15 million, and Braga wanted to t- wanted 20. 
and yeah. uh, they were denied on that. And there was a couple other ones that I think Sporting too. I think. Uh, well, don't forget they wanted Sai Mar and Marega, whatever his name is, and Porto sneaked in and stole them from him. Yeah. The Sporting apparently, from what I've heard, they tried to get Jackson Martinez on loan, and he opted to go to China instead. Tamala <laughs> coisa, pa. Nah, I mean, yo, pa, they're probably paying him six times more than whatever he's gonna make as sport, yeah. or you know, or even all this. I mean, have you guys all seen the pictures of Jackson Martinez during looks, his signing? He's he the looks, only guy that's not smiling. He looks about <laughs> as, as 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 enthusiastic as I do when I go for for cleaning. George George Mendes George Mendes looks looks he's, as happy as the day he saw his wife came came oh, out yeah. with the with his boob job. Dude, he's yeah. the, the, he was the happiest dude in the room. The happiest guy in the room. Oh, that guy works some magic. Let me tell you, that guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, but he's got to help us sell some of uh, some of our guys, like uh, Chris's boy Tarap. There, he got to figure something out. No man, you know, I'm I'm getting I'm I'm not even joking no more. Uh, and I hope all you guys at home listening or listening right now paying very close attention. I'm sick and tired of these Tarap jokes, man. All right. <laughs> It's, hey. it's not the guy's fault that this club, and this this the part you guys all rather crack on Tarap than realize that Arsad is inept, that Arsad was sleeping, or this was a BS under the table deal because everyone and their mother knew what you were getting with this guy, but yet this team felt it was necessary to go out there and get him and give him a, a five year deal at 2.3 million. That's not his fault. Which one of you would have said no to that? The guy's a good player. With, he's a good player. He just I he, said it was bad. It was a bad deal. Who guys sees a sitakrinado man? He needs a hug once in a while. I'm a look, man. The only thing he's hugging is a, some some pita bread. <laughs> Yo, come on, man. Leave the guy alone, bro. I mean, it I'll, sucks because he's many, young. He's only 26. He's so, not. He doesn't he's suck. He's talented. How many he's guys, talented? How many guys get? He's just soft. How many guys get get motivated to play on the B team? I mean, come on. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. The maybe guy don't want to be there. The guy don't want to be there, man. It is what it is. But, you know, he hasn't done a, a, enough to uh, prove himself to get back on the A team. I think that Ju I think that Judy Cheech perhaps had a, a worst attitude towards the team, mm -hmm. and he he made up for it, and he got a chance on the A team. Tarab, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't even make a twenty five man list for a game on game day. Come that's, on, man. That's What's going chilling. on? That's chilling yeah. by Rualto right now, man. Yeah, he's chilling. Uh, speaking of Tarap, Benfica submitted a new champion. Yeah, Alfredo. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Did you mention uh, our new signing today? Yeah. I didn't hear you mention him earlier. You got to adjust the headset. It was the first name I mentioned. Oh, <laughs> Luke, all right. Lucas Maybe from Red Star Belgrade. No, that's not the one I'm talking about. That's not about. who you're talking about. No, 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 no. That's, that's not who I'm talking, talking about. But that doesn't. I'm gonna get into that. But that doesn't count for the for the transfer okay. win. Yeah, transfer window. Timo, Timo, you're six months ahead. Why of doesn't time, it? Timo? Because well, it's, because it's, it's only going through in June. It's only going through in it, June. Right now, he's still a sporting player, Timo. So, <laughs> you still have. You, you still have. Bagarin. You still have the signature though, so you're all set. No, 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 no. Yeah. Not, it's not official. Until then. Official, yeah. But uh, I, uh, what I wanted to go into is uh, Befica resubmitted the, a list of names for the Champions League as all clubs are required at this junction for the next round. And uh, Lukas Jovic, Grimaldo, and Salvi were all added, which uh, gives me hope in regards to Salvi. That means that Salvi probably is not too far um, not too far from being back, maybe three, four weeks before he gets back. Um Pulled out of the original list that Benfica submitted at the beginning of the season. Cristant, <laughs> Vitor Andrade, Tarap, and Bilal. So Tarap and his, his younger brother were pulled out. Yeah, that kid Bilal. So much excitement about him. And whatever happened? Another another knucklehead, huh? He's only 17. And he's got Tarap as a role model. So he's doing well. <laughs> All right. Let's get into, let's get into Carrillo. Timu. Yep. Goodbye or no? It wasn't a buy. It was free signing. Yeah, it was a free. Uh, we, we, <laughs> you got, we you got some guy to sign on a piece of paper for free. Uh, it was probably, <laughs> you know, one of your rival's top players. Damn right it was a good signing. I mean, we took him away from them. I mean, he came to us for nothing. And the fact that they're doing as well as they have been this year without him, He's impressive. Imagine if he was playing. He's a talented kid. 
He's really good. Yeah, I mean, but he's pretty I, consistent up to this season. I mean, has the guy really had enough time to play? I mean, yes. Let's let this year alone. This year alone, has he? No. With a with a good coach. No, but like 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 Alfredo said. Like Alfredo said, Timo. Sometimes we need to listen, not just hear. We gotta listen. Okay. Uh, I heard him. He said inconsistent up until this year. Okay, and this year I don't want to hear that he's got a good coach when when his when his president has you know told the guy to train at a praia. You know what I mean? So it's not his fault. Listen, I I, th I think the kid. I think it's, I think it's a good pickup. I think it's a very good signing. I think not just will it add to our squad, it also weakens their squad. So mm -hmm. anytime you could do that to to one of your main rivals, it's it's a tremendous signing. Um, this is a kid with a ton of potential that I think is only going to get better with the proper coaching and the proper uh, training methods, and hopefully he straightens out the, you know, he doesn't come to Benfica and starts hanging out with the Rapt all the time because I like, you know, I hear that he likes to, to drink as well, <laughs> but hopefully he takes it serious and, and he's only going to add to the squad. Um, does leave some other questions for me. Um, I asked Patrick this early and Patrick almost bit my head off, uh, which was, now that he's in, does it, you know, does it open the door for, for Gaetan to leave? Yeah, because you know what I mean. So it, yeah. I don't think I don't think Gaetan's going anywhere, but it's just it's a good conversation. Now we've been talking about Gaetan's exit for quite some time. But yeah. George, what do you think about this uh, Carrillo thing? I think it's I know I I never thought he was a great player at Sporting, so I'm not going to say now he's going to be the greatest at Benfica. Great he's a very point. good player. I think m almost the most important part of the signing is the the psychological aspect, the the revenge factor, if you want to call it that. You know. Uh, you guys wounded us by by taking our coach. We didn't expect that we we're going to take this away. It kind of you know allows us to pump our chest a little bit more. Um, but I do believe uh, I don't know how else you can you I don't know how you can't believe uh, believe this that his arrival next year means that Salvi or Gaetan is gone are gone. Which one I don't know. Yeah. Both I hope not. But um, one of them is going to be gone because I don't see Benfica having Gaetan Salvio. And Carillo, Carillo, I don't know how to pronounce that name either. Um, at the start of next year, I don't see how that can happen. And then you have Carcela and Gedge and and whoever else. Those guys are all those guys are all B team. I mean, not B team. Right, they're all bad. They're all second. Yeah, yes. they're all secondary players. But if you're, I'm assuming Carillo is going to come in with a fairly high salary, um, or else no, he came for free. He wasn't going to come cheap. I don't see Benfica having three high-priced wingers where only yeah. two are going to play, unless unless they're Gaetan's willing to stay, and they're thinking of moving him into the middle of the field. Well, hold on. The, the, the thing on, on the salaries, let's not forget, Benfica now, starting next year, are going to have more money than they've ever had in their history. So they, they're they going to be able to afford a couple more guys here and there. They're going to be able to take on some salary. Um, there was another thing I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, this right here with the Carrillo coming to Benfica, it completes the circle. Benfica loses Maxi to Porto. Well, if he could lost to everybody, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that Sporting lost to us, but Sporting didn't lose nobody, so never mind. It's still not complete. Yeah, but at least we need one more one more to go around. I yeah, guess. I think I my uh, my whole take on uh, Carrillo, the biggest thing is obviously picking him up on a, on a free. His salary, as George has mentioned, is not going to be one of the lowest or even the middle one in our squad. I think that before Salvio uh, got injured, there was people that were sniffing around. I think Guy Dunn, uh, people have been sniffing around and been trying to lower the price for as long as I can remember. Perhaps this year, Luis Fliffieto will go. Maybe there's a certain gentleman's agreement with Sal with, with uh, Guy Dunn uh, that what, uh, Luis Fliffieto will finally let him leave if the right offer is there and if it's to a better league. I think that that gentleman's agreement will come into play. Uh, but I think that picking up Carrillo, which is fairly, I, I want to say 25, 26 at most. He's 24. He's 24. 24. So Benfica picking him up, yep. uh, uh, picking him up um, on a free. A uh, kid that's 24 years old uh, started for the Peruvian national team. Not the Peruvian national team is a is a world power or even a power in South America for that for that matter. But it's a guy that Benfica stands to make a lot of money on the kid, especially if uh, what. We saw earlier this season, I know that he's been inconsistent in past seasons, but if if he continues to build up on what we saw this season, on his prog progression and evolution, I think Vifika will stand to make a lot of money on this kid. 
go. You know, listen, man. I, I don't I, think I, Salvi. I don't think Salvi's going anywhere. I think Salvi's going to have to play a full season to prove to everyone else that he's healthy. Because Benfica aren't just going to let him walk away for 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 a bag of peanuts. If you're going to want, you know, be compensated well, and no team's going to spend that type of money with, you know, the uncertainty whether this guy's going to be healthy or not. So I don't think Salvi's going anywhere. That's how, no. That's, unless he asks and they come to a mutual agreement, like, yeah, they should meet, whatever. Gaetan, Gaetan. There might be something. Like, Gaetan is the question mark, but like we've touched here on the podcast over the last couple of weeks, where's he really going to go? You know, I, is I he going to go to a Crystal Palace, a Leicester maybe. City? He's not going to want to go to those teams. He wants to go to a bigger and better club. Name me all those bigger and better clubs. Market. Where does he, has, he play? He has a market. Does he play? Yeah, yeah, of course he plays. Where though? Where does I he th play? I he think play? he could play at Manchester United. But, over who? Over oh. Mata? Wait, who? Yeah, over yeah. Mata. He's gonna play over Mata? Come on, guys. I mean, where's he gonna play? Well, he, he got like I Atletico know. Griezmann. He's not gonna play over him. Barcelona, forget it. Real Madrid, Chelsea, Hazard. He's not going to play over Hazard, Oscar, or, or, or William. I'm not, not saying... Why not over Hazard? What has Hazard done? Come on, stop, 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 stop. stop. The reigning, the reigning I'm, I'm player of the year. Stop, I'm, stop, stop. I'm joking. You know where he The play? one thing I see you with Gaetan that... Liverpool, maybe. Shit, Liverpool. Ugh. Epa. Please not. Yeah, Emilio is still red. Eesh. Still red. Eesh. No. Eesh. Um, the one thing I see with Gaetan that, you know, that I've said numerous times is... Who's to say he really wants to leave? Yeah, I don't think so either. You know, people talk about players, you know, they're going to go here, they're going to go there. That's if the player wants. You know, a club can hit the release clause all they want, but unless they sign that player, unless that player agrees to terms, they don't have anything. Who's to say Gaetan wants to leave Benfica? Who's to say anybody wants to leave Benfica? I think, if anything, if you're going to lose one of our wingers, I think it's going to be Salvio. If he comes back and he shows that he's healthy, he's not worth as much as Gaetan, in my opinion. Guys. So he'd be the most likely to leave. Timo, six. You know, months. if Gaetan is worth forty, Timo. if Gaetan is worth forty, Salvio is worth twenty. Timo, that's you. You know what I'm saying? Timo. Go ahead. Six months is not enough. Yes, nobody, nobody will invest. No, in no, I understand. Time. I'm not saying this. I'm not even saying at the end of this year. I'm, you know. Maybe in the next year and a half. Maybe in the next year, two years. You know, who's to say that Gaetan wants to leave, and who's to say that another team's willing to pay that amount when they can maybe get Salvio when he's healthy? Who's, you know, he's not Gaetan, but he's also not a scrub. Yeah. Now it's uh, like I said, people were sniffing around before he got hurt, so there's definitely some interest there. I think that uh, right now with the, with the extent of his injury, there's a lot of hesitation. And and as I agree with Chris, six months is not going to be able uh, to prove anything, being that perhaps three of those months is going to be able to get into shape and, and playing rhythm, not to mention that he's going to hit the off season, So he won't get a chance to prove himself until the start, start of next season. If you, if you believe the rumors from the past few years, Twice, Salvio has been ready to be sold, mm -hmm. and both times blew out his knee. Um, is he going to think, let's get back to work, and I will still want to move on, or is he going to think, you know what, I'm even going to, I'm going to forget about those possible moves. They failed twice in the past. I'm happy here. Let me just take it out with my fika. Who knows uh, how what his desire is to to try other leagues. Other no, he's been in Spain already. Um, who knows what his desire is, but. Guys, I hope he can get back to health, and I hope he stays as long as he as we he can. I think this decision is out of his hands. It's, I don't think it, before it was in his hands. I don't think it's no longer in his hands. I think it's a club now. That's that's you need a club to be willing to invest millions of dollars on a huge question mark, a guy that can't stay healthy, and we're talking about back to back to back seasons with major injuries, mm -hmm. and to me. I think the, the the prospect of Salvio leaving for a big money move, I think that went out the window. I don't care if he comes back healthy. I still think the big money move is out the window because teams will not invest on a guy that's been repaired and put together multiple times with major injuries. It wasn't like okay, he broke his arm. That's not a major. I think that was one of the season that ended. You know, one of the season-ending injuries he had, and that's why I said three. But let's just stick to the two major knee surgeries. 
No club is going to want to invest major money on a player that can't stay together, on a player that's been you know glued back together. That's I, a good, I, don't think I agree. Point. I agree. But well, let me what's to say, say that? Uh, let me just say one thing. If I was in charge of a club, today I would give $10 million for Uman Kumantorish. Epa. Hola, Neil. Hola, Neil. Hola, Neil. Epa, tu, yo, what do you guys see in Toronto, I man? Do, there's, some, there's something in the air in Toronto. <laughs> Me and my boy Neil, we'd invest our, 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 our lottery winnings and bring, bring back Montorish. Koshu and all. What's to say that a team wasn't to come out and say, hey, look, you know what? His release is. I don't even know what is it. What it is. Let's just say it's 25. Team, we need to stop being fans 30. and we have to but think what's logically. To say a, think, team, yes, but what's, to say, team, what's to say a team wasn't to come by and say, hey, look, in this last six months, he looked pretty impressive. You know, here's 15. You don't think Benfica would let no, him go for 15? Yeah, but after, that team, yes. After three years of being hurt? <sighs> yes, but no, exactly. But you just hit the freaking nail on the head after three years of being hurt. Listen, you're right. Benfica will take 10 million for him today. Because they know that no team's going to come for anything similar to that. You need to remember, he is an injury risk player now. No team is going to want to invest. He might leave Benfica, but it's not going to be for anywhere near that type of money. You need to stop thinking as what's best for Benfica, 100%. You got to think about the other person on the other end of the phone. The other person making the call. It's not you. If I come okay. to you and I don't, I don't care, and I don't, okay. I don't want to know what kind of car you have. But if I offer you a hundred thousand dollars for a twenty thousand dollar car, you're gonna say hell yeah. But then you have to ask yourself the question: What the hell is Cristiano smoking? There you go. I'll give hey. it to you. But that's okay. the question. All right, then, then let's take it this far. Why did Stoke give the team from the north twenty four point something that, that, million euros for a player that played what five games? That's and irrelevant. Nothing? Timo, Timo. Why? Let's, Timo, let's think logically. There are, Timo, this, there are teams Timo, out there that you will ask pay the that kind of money. Jesus Christ, you asked the question. I'm trying to answer the question. <laughs> that was a player that showed a lot of promise in years past, came to football club Corruptu, didn't impress. Okay, he didn't. It wasn't because he was injured. This is what I think you're missing here. It's the injury aspect, guys. Yeah. It wasn't the fact that he hasn't been impressive because there's always a fool being born every single day that thinks they could turn your trash into gold tomorrow. That happens. But now look with that injuries. Up. Exactly. Look at the rap. <laughs> look at that up. But it doesn't happen with injuries, Timo. And we're talking about major injury. I can't believe I've spent 20 minutes talking about injuries because that should just be like, yeah, you're right. It, it's end of story. It doesn't happen. There's a big risk. Get it? Hey, but, hey, but here's one for you, Cristiano. Uh, at five million, do you take that up? Do you take Salvio? At five million? If, if mean... you're an owner at, of a club in England. <laughs> <laughs> I don't answer that. <laughs> right? I, I'm taking that up because at least he's healthy. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, just one last thing on this career. He's thing. overweight. Before before we uh, move on, uh, and this goes back to what Cristiano was saying at the beginning of the pod, um, Sporting actually announced today on their Facebook or whatever it was that they had been contacted by Befica. Mind you, Befica has not yet officially announced Carrillo's signing, but they were courteous enough to contact Sporting and told Sporting that they had reached an agreement with Carrillo for to for them for Carrillo to play for Benfica next year. So that just shows you the class of a club like Benfica. I don't yeah. know. I don't know, Alfredo. You can look at it. You can look at this a bunch of different ways. First of all, we didn't need Sporting. The two come different out. presidents from the two Bintinho. other teams made the exactly. announcement before we did. Pintinho came out and he made the announcement well, first. He didn't make an announcement. He said he just said that uh, he, he. Well, he was right. He, Whatever he said, he was right. He, he, he said asked, that he's signing for Benfica. He asked and said that he was talking to Benfica. Now there's there, there could be a bunch of different. No, reasons. no. He said he signed for Benfica. Yes, he did. He said he signed for Benfica. Now he's yeah. like, from what I've heard, Carrillo signing for Benfica. Those were his words. Now. It could be a bunch of different reasons as to why Benfica hasn't formally announced it yet or whatever. I mean, Benfica is not supposed to be in contact with the player until now, I think, whatever. There was a date. Not uh, after, that, when the window opens. Okay. So 
there's reports that Sporting, and of course I'm not expecting anything different from Sporting, but there's reports that Sporting going to take him to court and say that they that they contacted him early, kind of like what they did to George Jesus. They contacted him before his contract was up. So it's just a lot of noise, uh, but you know it's still a very good signing, a player that I think is going to do well for Benfica. From, from what I understand, I believe Benfica had to inform Sporting within a week of any eventual deal being signed with the player. And I think that's to avoid... Like, imagine Benfica didn't have to let Sporting know, and imagine Carillo was actually practicing and playing with Sporting while signed with Benfica. So, although it it may be a courteous gesture, I don't know how courteous it was or how much of it was just the legalities of what had to be done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or, yeah, or rub in a, a rub in a face, right? A public rub in a face. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's uh, turn our attention now to this weekend's game. Actually, this Friday's game uh, that Benfica plays against uh, Bulnins uh, at the Restelo. Um Bulnins is uh, currently in tenth uh, with six wins, seven ties, and seven losses at home. There are four wins, four ties, and one loss. Uh, last five matches that the Bulnins has played. Five wins and one tie. Of course, that includes the the Tasa de Liga, um, and uh, obviously they're unbeaten in the last five matches that they played. Uh, uh, last uh, five matches, I, I just I think I messed this all up. Unbeaten in the last five matches. Last five matches played against Benfica. Four wins for Benfica, one tie, and uh, last ten games for Bolnens, four wins, four ties, and two losses to Estoril and Braga. So uh, a, a, a team, a Bulnes that's ever since they got rid of uh, of their coach Sapinto has kind of steadied the ship and has proven themselves to uh, be a, a good uh, team. They're still putting together. They just picked up the the captain of From the Colombian Columbia national team, and uh, you know he's not going to be able to play this weekend. Obviously, he's, I don't expect him that he'll be good to play. But, uh, Timu, a very hard game for Benfica. Uh, always is. Um, I like Blanche. You know, I think they're, you know, a feisty type of team. And, you know, it, it looks like, I don't know, how do I want to put this? They did well going to Madeira to play at Maritimo. You know, um, you know they it was a tie against Guimarães 3-3. And they beat Rio Ave before that. So it's not like, you know, they're in bad form right now. They're doing pretty decent. Um, the one thing I would say, though, is... It, I don't know. Benfica is on a roll, man. I yeah. don't want to sound like Neil, but it just looks like we ha we're we on all cylinders right now. Even when we look bad, we still win. Um, the one thing I would say, though, is can we please keep a damn clean sheet? These, yeah. these one little stupid goals we keep giving up, you know, which happens to always look like it's a stupid pass in the midfield or up the midfield, and the midfielder loses it, you know, coming back towards the center backs where one of them is trying to, you know, push up and, you know, help out. Can we stop with that? Um, that, that that's all I ask for. Right. Um, but, it, you know what? We're going there. I still think we're going to walk away with a comfortable win. Three. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go out and say it. it's gonna be three to one. Yeah. Because we're gonna give up a goal again. Yeah. In the we first round, do. in the first round, we beat him six nothing. Two goals by Jonas, yep. two goals by Mitroglou, one goal by Gatan, and one goal by Deshotalishka Joga. Um, Cristiano, <laughs> Miguel Rosa, Carlos Martins, and Tonel. I especially, I'm I'm worried about Miguel Rosa and Carlos Martins. I think these guys are perhaps due for a good game against us. Yeah, they're going to want to show. I mean, we said this the last time. They came to start the losing. We spanked them 6-0. They're, they're going to want to show that there was a mistake letting them go. And I think now they're professionals, man. It's been years since these guys have left Benfica. I think they've gotten over that. I'm not going to say it's not going to be a special game because every time you play against Benfica, it's a special game. But I think that they let go of that and they're just going to go out there and try to come away and do exactly what the coach asks them to do. Um, but I think Benfica's too strong right now. Um, I think, again, it's a team that um, is playing a lot better since the change of coach. Like you mentioned, Velasquez, I believe is his name, the new coach yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, Obviously, the team's playing a lot better, but still a team that Benfica should have no problem beating them. The only thing that gives me a little, a little concern is the fact that it's on the road because we know 
road games a little bit tougher than than playing at Stade de Luz with the with the great fan support. Benfica just seems to hit on all cylinders playing at home. So, but even that said, I still think Benfica um, come away with a two nothing victory and uh, keep marching on until they play the big boys. Yeah, I think I think aren't we the uh, team that always has a good road? Uh, aren't we the team that always has a very good road showing with our with our fans? I mean, did you watch this last game? Did you see that whole end line? With how many fans were there? Did you hear the home fans at all in this last game? You asking me? Just, just wondering. Is, you asking me? Well, just wondering. Teams, teams in Portugal, <laughs> other than the big, other than the top five, don't have fans. Um, <laughs> exactly. I think they mentioned that Muridense, the population is six thousand people, which uh, yeah, maybe you know. fifty fans. But I was going to mention. Know. I think of all the road games, this is probably the easiest one. Benfica has for two reasons. One is the size of the field and the size of the stadium. It's not one of these tight little boxes that you see um, up north with the bad grass and, and no space. It's a, There's a large field, lots of space. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to watch a Benfica game at Bolognese and the stadium holds 20 plus thousand and then you get 20 plus thousand Mayfikishas in there especially now with the the Onda Vermelha beginning and the the Colinho the the, the Colinho beginning um, I'm ex the fact that the game's on a Friday might not help nice. but I'm expecting a huge Friday night bro Friday night and it, it is late enough it, I believe it's at 3:30 uh, Eastern 8:30 yeah, looks, um, looks so I'm expecting 20 plus thousand Mayfikishas there the field shouldn't be an issue um, so I think it shouldn't. The wind shouldn't come uh, with much difficulty. Hey George, how far do you live from Neil? <laughs> in in, ca in Canada or in, or in Canada? Canada, obviously. Yeah. Like right uh, five uh, five six hours away. Oh damn, you're that far. I, I was. Yeah. I thought you were close. I was gonna ask you to go choke him. <laughs> because this guy, you know, on Twitter, Valencia is an away game. Are you high? There's no away games for Benfica. You're right. They're all home games. You guys are 100% yeah. correct. <laughs> hey, Chris, we're, here's one for you. Popsik is one yellow away from uh, from being suspended. The next game is, uh, after Valencia is Porto. Does Rui Vitória oh, rest Popsik? No, play him. I mean, we went over this last year, getting games leading to Porto. If Moxie plays and that guy plays and that guy, and JJ never rested anybody, and they all played with the exception never of Samadis, with the exception of Samadis, I believe. Listen, the most important game is your next game. That's it. Go out there, win the game. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing Grimaldo, but is Grimaldo ready for a game? I think if Grimaldo is going to play, going to get a start, it's probably going to be at home before he does on the road, unless it's against you know one of these Tasa games against a very weak opponent. Yeah. Why not let him play now against Valencia? He didn't look bad when he came in. Nobody said he looked bad. It's a road game. game. It's a road game, and you need you need the points. Yeah. You to make sure you get the victory. Yeah. Put you're your best Li lineup out there. Yeah. As, so, as uh, George said, you're in Lisbon in a field that Benfica is probably going to pack. You really think it's a road are. game? They probably are, but it's still a road. I don't care what you say. It's still a road game. Yeah. <laughs> It's a road game, but it's going to be most difficult. Difficult. But listen, we're talking about a club, a club in Berlin's that is not Murinense. This is a club who's, who's, you know, has history. A club. I'm not saying they they're going to pack the stadium with fans, but they do have fans. They have their own fans. Um, and either way, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if the place doesn't have one Berlin's fan in the place. It's still a road game. Um, and, and it's where Bullens will feel more comfortable. That's their headquarters. That's what they're familiar with. It's totally different, and we've seen it game after game, year after year. When these teams go out on the road, it's totally different than when playing at Stade de Luz. The yeah. atmosphere is totally different. Hey, Chris, Chris, uh, do, you, do you know uh, the name of the supporters group for Bullens? Uh, No, go ahead. I would, I would invent something, but go uh, ahead. Neither do I. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, the Braga game, the, the, the semifinals for the Tasa de Liga yes. that we were supposed to play uh, has been postponed because of fixture con uh, congestion for both teams. We're not sure yet. The league hasn't announced yet when they're going to push the game to. Uh, obviously, they're going to look at both teams' schedules and, uh, and make a decision then, but uh, we don't know yet. Um, Twitter questions? You guys want to take some? Sure. Why not? Anybody but Neil. Neil, that's it. You've been far from asking questions. <laughs> that's I it. think he's the only one who sent any. Yeah, Cristiano, here's one for you. This is from Kyle Shavs. What's up, should, Kyle? Should Benfica sell a striker to make room for Jovic in the starting lineup or wait until he is older? 
Too late now, man. Talk about that next year. Too late now. Well, what next year? Uh, well, next year they could just plug in Jovic and let go of Mitroglou. They don't have to sell nobody. Obviously, it feels up to me. I'd sell Jimenez. <laughs> Peace, Sayonara, but I don't think they're going to do that right now. So, yeah, right now, I mean, listen, he's still 17 years old, very young, still needs the experience. He's making a big leap right now to, to, to you know, one of the better leagues in Europe. Um, still need to see if this kid can play at this level or not. So, right now, I'm I'm not sure, man. To be honest with you, I'm not sure because I don't even know, man. It's too early to tell Benfica's gonna do in the off season. And the the Ford, the Uruguayan Ford we got last year, and then we loaned him out to Spain. That uh, Rodriguez, uh, what's his name? Yeah. Bebelu, you guys called him Bebelu. Bebelu, yeah, Jonathan Bebelu. Rodriguez. Jonathan. He he came over. He came over on a loan with the option to buy, but it was like a, a year and a half or two and a half years loan. Is he done with us if we don't sign him, or do we still have him another year? Do you guys know? I thought he I signed. Think he's free. He's didn't he sign? Like, didn't he sign for like five years? Yeah, I he's, he got, he's got more years in his contract. I'll look into it. Yeah, we sent him out on loan, and the guy, he's been, he hasn't been good to say yeah. the least. Um, here's one for Matthew the Silva, and uh, I will, uh, I'll answer this one. Uh, it says uh, with Carrillo signing for Benfica uh, and Rafa Silva interest from Benfica and Porto, who would you prefer? I think that the Rafa Silva's cost or the money that Braga is asking for him is kind of prohibitive for Benfica, 20 million for him. I, I don't think that uh, Benfica will spend that much on a, on a young Portuguese player. I do like him, though. Do like uh, him. He is good. And I mentioned on the pot, I'm shocked that he's still at Braga. I'm shocked he's last. With all the crap leaving Portugal on a yearly basis, I'm shocked that this kid's lasted that long at Braga. Yeah, here's one for you, uh, George, and this one is from uh, Lino Fernandes. You might know him as uh, Neil's brother. Uh, yes. Is Carrillo an automatic starter next season? Uh, is Gaetan gone because of this? And does Sporting make his life hell? That's three questions, bro. It's a three-parter. <laughs> does, does Sporting make his life hell? Sporting's been making his life hell for four years. Just being there is making your life hell. Four um, is he an, Is he an automatic starter? I think, as I mentioned earlier, it'll depend on what happens with Gaitan or Salvio. If one of them leaves, and Salvio. Yep. Yeah. If one of them leaves, then he's in. If the decision is to keep both of them and move Gaitan into the middle, then yes. But I think if Salvio and Gaitan are both on the wings next year, and if Salvio proves that he's returned from his injury, then it'll be difficult, I think, for Carillo to pass them in the starting lineup. But the question mark is. Will Salvi be able to return to form? Yeah, that's a big question mark. We don't know until we get there. I don't know where he's going to play, yeah. but I have a feeling he's going to play somewhere. I don't know where. I think who's, who's to say we don't loan him out? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um, here's, uh, here's, I don't know if you read this one, uh, Cristiano, from Kevin Millar. Uh, unfair criticism from Ad10CO10. Benfica with a 40-plus gold difference with John a second for the golden golden boot. Without the win, nothing matters. That's not a question. That's a statement. But I don't think I said anything <laughs> different. I mean, I, I think I've said here all along that what's most important is the three points. But when asking me if the team imp was impressive, I didn't think they were impressive. I thought it was, with the exception of the build-up to the four goals, I thought it was a snooze fest. I didn't think Benfica created many chances. I didn't think they played that attractive football. You guys are right. Attractive football doesn't give you extra points. But if you're asking me on my opinion on the game, I'm going to give you my opinion. Not what you want to hear. Not what somebody else wants to say. I'm going to give you what I think. And to me, yeah, the most important thing is the points. Without a doubt. Doesn't mean it was impressive, though. Yeah. Uh, Mike DeCosta also is as a statement. He says, uh, ask Sporting if they like playing against these professional teams lately, losing points against the bottom teams. So it's it's a it's a tricky situation. Even though we're they're not real tests, they're teams that they could give you a hard time. I I'm with Mike on that. Um, there's one from Kevin Millar. Another one from Kevin Millar. Does Luis Flipier have an Instagram or a Snapchat? Uh, Kevin, I don't think he has. An Instagram or a Snapchat. What he does have is a huge big screen TV and a bag of chips and an ottoman to rest his feet on. <laughs> He's got a I'll of send that link on. over to him so he can see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see what else we got here. 
Um, Francisco Marcelino, first goal versus Moreirense is the goal I enjoy the most this season. It reflects the evolution of our game, uh, of our game lately. Yeah. I think I think that was I, I I apologize to keep harping on this, uh, but I think it was also Steve's uh, favorite goal with a nice cross in from the wing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both. Well, that one and the second goal. And I mean, the second one. Renato Renato puts Elisel deep and. <laughs> Pop Sick was able hey. to catch up to him before he came out. And then what a finish by <laughs> by, by uh, Mitro. I tell you, if the goalie you know, put his head to that, it would have knocked his head off. There's a, there's a, a GIF uh, on the internet somewhere where right next to the line where Pop Sick sprints to, there's a McDonald's <laughs> entrance. <laughs> I think that was the boy. fastest I've ever seen him run with a Benfica jersey on. <laughs> This past weekend, that was unbelievable. He, he the ball up, didn't even come close. Didn't even come close to going over the line. He used up his R1 all on that play. <laughs> he did. He held on to that button right there. I, I'm glad Mario <clears throat> Mario M. Sov feels the same way about the Rapt as I do. He says, "LOL, uh, sorry that guy is a bum and pure. <laughs> Freddie Adu <laughs> had good hype too and turned out to be a bum too." Yeah. Hey, uh, um, Juan Gomes underscore Gomes eighty nine underscore. He says Belenenses supporters are called the Furia Azul. Yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't know say, that. I was Good gonna say, I, I was gonna say Azul's burrados before, but I didn't want. I thought I actually I actually did think. <laughs> oh, but Azul. I think I'm reading that right, but I could be wrong because quite a few of these. Yeah, yeah, I actually I actually thought Alfredo knew the name, so I didn't attempt <laughs> to. Uh, Furia Azul, expect another 4 1 win. We wear the yellow cards and keep the focus on ourselves. Yeah. Good point, João. There's one from uh, uh, Rob Correa. Should we have done more during the January window? Uh, Rob, I don't think so. The way the team has been and the guys that are coming back healthy to play, I think that's enough depth. I think picking up more guys would only make the job more difficult for Vittorio. What about a center back? Yeah, I was thinking about that, Timo. We're, we're thin there. We're thin. But yo, when we could play Clesio, when we could play Clesio at right back, I'm pretty sure there's a striker on the B team we could play a center back. And it doesn't matter. We have Jardel. That's all we need. Quite the thing. Lind Lindelof wasn't wasn't horrible. He he he, he was when in he came in. He wasn't bad. He stepped in. He played pretty well in the league in the League Cup mm -hmm. match, and he came in fairly well in the league. So he's a good fourth option. Yeah, but look, he, you know what. You play, I, you're playing down. against you're playing against a team that, as Cristiano says, only has two professionals and are losing uh, six nothing or four nothing, whatever. How many how many guys are they really putting up front and challenging Benfica center back? So I don't know if I think since uh, Lindelof kind of had an easy game, I yes. think I have yet to see a lot more from him. I once played think, center back. How, how often is Lisandro all the way up top anyway? It's usually at like a three. Three two like nineteen thousand up top anyway. Hey Alfredo, I also play center back one one game too. Well, when you were playing Matrex? No, no, no. I just I wanted I wanted to take the goal kicks. I wanted to see how far I kicked the ball. So I didn't <laughs> make playing out. center back. How did you make out? I, I was Faze, to... But I think I think Faza plays uh, has played and can play center back as well. Samaris, Samaris, Samaris. Samaris yeah, yeah, Samar didn't Samaris do it last year? Didn't he do it? I thought he did. That's he, did. he did. He yeah. did a couple of games last game. year. Yeah. yeah. He, he did. did. He did. Hey, if anything, he got dropped. Dropped could play back there. Yeah, as long as he doesn't have to do much running. That's it. You guys will be a hey, Bring in Ederson. Just don't let him play with his feet. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's about it. All right, guys. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, George, I don't know. I, I don't want to screw up your Twitter. Throw up your Nothing. Twitter, man. It's at, at negative George. I, uh, I I apologize for the lack of uh, tweet tweeting, but I try to I try to throw a, a funny one liner every once in a while. But that yeah. uh, negative George, feel free to contact me, complain about me, praise <laughs> me, whatever you want. They'll be too busy. Hey, to he only follows me. he only follows one person. That's it. Benfica podcast. That's it. That's it. My you only goal, follow what if you could podcast, dude? My my goal when I started when I started Twitter, I, my goal was to get as many followers as possible without following anyone. 
And then I was like, I gotta at least follow these guys so I can see some of the funny comments going through. So yeah, the one, the one, the one, uh, one the one got person I follow, the one thing I follow. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Timo, I don't know yours because you're always changing yours, dude. I changed it once, and I did it for uh, Mr. Cristiano. It's uh, at underscore Timo1, and it's going to stay there unless I can just get Timo, but somebody has it already. Um, thanks for inviting me on again. I didn't provide as much as uh, normally I do. Um, now you I was able to... Uh, I was able to uh, combat, or combat, should I say, uh, Mr. Cristiano a couple times, which is always the you know good thing. Somebody's got to go up against them, because uh, all he does is you know talk trash. So, you know that was it. <laughs> hey, uh, to Mr. Uh, Steve Santos and his, uh, you know, and Tatiana, I believe her name is. Yep. Congratulations, and to Mao and Cynthia. This is for you guys, and your yeah. kids, new kids. Yes, yeah, for all the the young new kids on the block. Out there. New and also, cases. when you have oh yeah, new and uh, to, a shout out to my boy Neil. I agree. <laughs> yes, you, buddy. My my boy Lino and Vasco. Shout out to Vasco. Somebody's got to shout out Neil. <laughs> you can edit all this stuff, right, Alfredo? You got to edit this later. <laughs> uh, no, actually, cut it all out. Actually, Timo is going to be at the Luge for the both the Classic and the Zenit game. So I don't know nice. if he wants to meet up with anybody, but hit up Timo. You know, uh, um, maybe you I've can already, be funnish. Yes, I've already uh, mentioned, um, you know, quite a few times I've been tweeting back and forth. Uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing Magda there again, who uh, one day will be the president or the vice president of Benfica. I'm sure she knows everything about the Modelli Dodge, even though that uh, <laughs> Mr. Cristiano doesn't give a flying, you know, what about him. Uh <laughs> I'll probably meet her there again. I met her the last time. I'll meet her there this time. Um, I don't know if, uh, you know, João and Manel will be there, but if they are, I'll meet with them. And uh, I've connected with uh, Mr. Pat Patrick Kendrick as well. Um, hopefully I'll be able to have a couple of uh, sagas there with him as well. So I'll be there. and Look out for the hashtag uh, Timo Naluge like it was there last year. <laughs> All right, at 10CO10 is where you can find Cristiano on Twitter, at Pifica Podcast. PlanetPifica.co.uk is where you can find our friends João and Manel. Uh, and that's about it. Next week we'll be back with a big preview of the Clásico. Um, I don't know yet who we'll have that lined up to be on a podcast with us, but we'll have somebody. We'll, uh, we'll throw a couple coins up in the air and we'll figure out who we're going to have. Um, thank you very much for checking us out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And uh, don't miss us next week. All right. Thanks, you guys, for coming. Cristiano, João e Manel, Jorge e Timo. Excellent. See you guys next week. See ya. <laughs>